honest about it. It's it's a fake, you know, and that's very sad for a lot of people. I'm the, I'm the real debunker. It's here. a brilliant fake. But why it's is it sad? You're all much more interested in the fake. What, what makes it's it sad? sad? Because all right, that's, that's, the, great, that's the great question. Mm. We want there to be weirdness mm. and weirdness and wonderfulness in mm. our world, don't At we? At the expense of truth. Yes, what's truth? What's well, truth? Do we ever know the truth? Truth is weird. No, no, no. Well, back no. To the but we can approach book, it, and we can approach it very closely. You're talking if about we scientific try truth. truth. No, no, I'm talking about truth. Same. No, no. Not at all. Well, so There's example, no such thing as scientific truth, first of all. No, but for example, ordinary kinds That's of truth that we think <laughs> of are bounded by time, yes? I mean, they say that there mm. are rigid divisions between past, present, and future. Well, the unconscious knows no time. Mm. And so issues about precognition and so forth can be considered very, very differently if you take a depth view psychologically. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that's being taken, taken account of. Yeah, now, whether one, says, whether one says that the future can actually be imagined is, of course, a difficult point. You could argue, well, the future hasn't happened yet. You could also say there's nothing new under the sun. What are the bits and pieces that comprise the future? It's not clear. It's such a crude time. instrument. If you go to yes. do any analysis of it, I mean, I, I, I suppose I'm the reverse of Lynn. I'm kind of someone who doesn't believe a word of this but thinks it's dead interesting. And James seems to be like... <laughs> the, <laughs> with, uh, with you all the way, Mary. Like the By kind God. of guy who's going to come along and do Never an analysis God. of Father Christmas and is going to convince us that Father Christmas does not exist. Oh, no. Oh. oh, no. You're not, you're not right. going to say that on television oh, before. Please. Please. Um, Children who are watching, that is nasty. You see what I mean, James? I mean, you see that, you know, in, in showing something to be you know, falsifiable, you haven't shown it to be uninteresting. Oh, no, not at all. I've never said it's not interesting. I'm totally fascinated with everything that's weird. I don't care what it is. And if we don't look into it and take it seriously as a phenomenon, then we're missing the boat. All right, give us an explanation. Give us one thing that you've investigated that you haven't found an answer to. Uh, I haven't gotten anything so far. If I come upon right. something... Well, I think oh, that's, that demonstrates exactly what demonstrates we're saying. Demonstrates what? I think it demonstrates that you are always going to find an answer because you're so determined that there's going to be I'm one. Looking or for it demonstrates that... Science does have an answer to most things. Well, I don't think so. I think that any... The problem is that with people who research the paranormal, you will find that most of them disbelieve as much as they actually believe. Yes. Because there's a difference between having an open mind and having a disbelieving mind. Mm -hmm. And having Absolutely. a hole in the head. That's a different thing. Well, can I ask but about... But sitting on the outside of this circle, oh. this looks just like two mythic systems having a bit of a clash. You know, and I don't buy either mythic system, but I think it's interesting to I watch. certainly don't have a well, mythic system. I haven't defined it. Which, how do you feel about being a mythic system well, having a clash, Dave? <laughs> Is that kind of, I think I've got, one, I think I've got one in front of me as well, I can see, but, but, but um, let's try something else. I mean, the, the, the weird experience have to do with fears, yes? Mm. And, and do, we, to do with fears? Fears. With fears. Okay. All of them, I think, at one level or, or another. And we're confronted there with a real problem, be because at one, in one way, then those fears change historically, and so we get different accounts of, of weird experiences. In another way, they don't shift so much, so that on the shifting side, you get different embodiments of phantoms, ghosts, spirits, and so forth. You get different social phenomena, serial killers now, as it might be, something different in, 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 in the Middle Ages. I'm sure Mary can fill me in on this much better than, than I can manage myself back in Greek times. Um, but you have enduring things as well, perhaps. I mean, so you have these two kinds of strands of fears going on, and I'm sure that an enormous number of weird experiences are ways, not perhaps of directly representing those, fears, but ways, ways of negotiating those about. fears, ways, ways of handling them, of yeah. dealing with them in ways that can be partly, can partly come out into the outer world, partly stay within, partly negotiate that problematic boundary between outer and inner, which is what the imagination yeah. is there for. And, and that's why they need to be contested. It's a way of handling them. There are no answers. Yeah. It's a negotiation. Right. We, we, okay. we yeah, negotiate okay. the inner world and the outer world, and one of the ways we do it is in an apprehension of weird experiences. No answer. Would you agree no that, questions. That, that most of the weird things uh, may result from a fear of death? I mean, dead death, you know, bomb. I'm not. I'm not sure that our fears are, are as simple as that, and I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not sure. I would quite agree with that. Well, uh, even beyond death, let's look at this thing in front of us. Damien one and Damien two, as I called him. Together with the word <laughs> weird today, tonight, obviously throughout this evening, it, it's freak shows. The freaks. The freak. Yeah. But, it, but it's also the unexpected, mm. and, and mm. I, think, I think probably this is yes, the mm. shock of the unexpected, mm. Mm. which is probably the most disturbing thing for modern man. Mm. Um, uh, my friend Michelle Merger, who wrote a book, Lake Monster Traditions, actually showed that the vast majority of uh, stories that originate about monsters in lakes begin with vague, rather vague experiences uh, of some raw process in nature, being out on a, on, a, on a still lake at a time which is, uh, um, well, just fills one with fear. You know, the, the, the water starts bubbling, or there's, a, there's a, an odd, oddly shaped log, or the wind blows the waves into a certain shape. But that, that's one thing. It's almost unknowable. We can, we can never really know what the origin of a sighting mm. is. The second part of the problem is the way the story then propagates in society. 
through people who report it, twist it, add it, add their own imagination to so it. The really weird is things that our imaginations have worked on as well. It's an imaginative construct. But every, we, our our imaginations work on everything. Everything, everything we've yeah. seen. So, I mean, what, totally. What, what Bob's been saying is it you know, adds up as far as I can see to, you know, it is a problem being a human being. Right? Mm. Or teach our children, children not, not to expect the unexpected, mm. to, to accept that everything mm. that um, we know about the world follows a linear progression and mm -hmm. can be easily resolved. And then when something like this does come, that's why we treat it in the way that we do. Mm. Because See, it, it, it may well be that many... We've been indoctrinated into a wrong way of thinking. Mm. It may well be that many events that we call synchronous, for example, uh, you think of somebody and then the phone rings. Mm. It, it may happen all the time, but there are certain, mm. cer certain times when we know it, when we, sorry, uh, recognize that moment that it's happened. And then it becomes meaningful. And that's, an that's another another layer in the process when we add meaningfulness to things. Going back, but, going back but, to monsters, I mean, th th there were no monsters until you show them to somebody. Etymology. Sorry, I know. <laughs> Academic. Monster, <laughs> monstro. I show. Demonstrate. Right. The monster yeah. becomes a monster when you show it to somebody. Right. This, in the wild, is not a monster. It's a monster when it becomes an object for somebody else's gaze. Oh, come on, that's a monster. A two-headed two calf in the wild is surely a monster. Who knows what the boundaries are what? around species permission? <coughs> it's, it's, not only, clear. it's a monster when you put it in a museum. It's not clear. All right. But actually, right what? at the beginning oh, the of the, uh, the Royal Society, you know, even, even Newton uh, had to bring to every meeting uh, some wonder that had happened within his sphere mm. of interest and correspondence. And they would bring along notes of, uh, you know, somebody who would survive having a kidney, kidney stone operation without anaesthetic, of course, in those days, or a two-headed, what's it? The point was made in, in, in the Freak Show video um, early on this evening, wasn't it? I mean, you know, that the, the boundaries around what is a permissible birth are going narrower and mm. narrower and narrower. That's a very interesting point. Can I, ask, can I ask, then, is the weird an entertainment form which Newton brings along with him, we bring along here, or is it something that should actually be important to us and some value? Well, it's it's, a, conf it's, it's, it's a confrontation with another level of reality, isn't it? it it's a, a very minor thing. I mean, that, although it's a freak, quotes a freak of nature, is a very minor thing in our experience. But nevertheless, it's there, it's confronting us. We are put in our place to a certain extent. We have a little frisson of terror about our place in the world. You know, actually, on the, uh, the freak show um, video, it was very interesting to me, the reactions of people. It's almost like, uh, well, not perhaps just because there were film cameras there, but they were kind of making these rather offensive comments at the freaks um, in this kind of, oh, well, we ought to make some kind of offensive comment, I suppose, you know, this kind of attitude. Um, and it was, uh, it was nerves. And mm. they'd made themselves yes, confront these people. Well, why, mm. why they... can't it be both entertainment mm. and exactly. illuminating? Mm. I mean, yeah. politics is the same thing. Yes. Yes. Politics is entertainment. entertainment. It's your business. Yeah, it's and there's the real feature. show. That's right. In the history of science, um, that mm. most, most of the dynamic processes are about normalizing science. Science has always been about repeatability and uh, replication and so on. Um, it's, it's the anomalies which, which lead to the to the next leap, the paradigm shift. And, uh, and the next leap of the what? Listen, <laughs> the paradigm shift. Stay with me here. I'm just a journalist. Like, like paradigm the, shift. Like the shift from New Newtonian ideas about the universe to, to Einsteinian. Ideas, you know, it's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a whole yeah. new, it's a new way, new way of looking. This is a new scientific progress, which we feel a bit shifty which about. Suddenly, mm -hmm. Which suddenly puts a whole lot of the problems the previous <laughs> paradigm <laughs> couldn't explain yeah. into a new focus. The anomaly we can manage. The problem is with uncanny repetition. Coincidence, precognition, ah. something coming round again in but a different it's, form. It's only coincidence. What's it's happening. only coincidence. Yes, yeah. well, indeed, Bob was on. To, uh, well, wh what, when, when are the moods, individually or socioculturally, when we apprehend coincidence as the main structure we should be attending to? We call that magic, I think, probably, yes. don't we? Mm. In the we've main. Lost the magic and I believe that that magic I mean, lies deep well, inside have us. Have we lost the magic, or are we coming no, no, back to it? No, no, we haven't lost the magic. No. We've, lost oh, the no. ability to, we've lost the ability to think magically in a We've in lost a the will to negotiate with the magic. Yeah, okay, in a controlled way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think I think the they're reason they're I'm mentioning time is I'm bringing you <laughs> yeah. on to the other point before we end here. The time is moving on towards the year 2000. Yeah. We're talking millennial, aren't we? Oh. And there's meant to be weird things, weird spiritual movements at each of these points. Now, can my historians help me? Here? They're already happening. You know, in the in the year 1000, Voltaire at least and Gibbons both said, and it, they may be inventions because we don't have much more proof than what they said about it. That in France they didn't pl uh, plant any crops because it was the end of the world, 1,000 years, the millennium and such, and the people went hungry the next year. Oh, oh, just, just to prove that I'm a human being, and many people say, oh no, he can't possibly be a real person. Yes. I, I have to tell you briefly about a remarkable coincidence that happened to me. A gentleman called me not